like how I do that. Yes, I did. A lot of kids. Steps too. Hey, everybody. Monday, Friday. <laughs> Dang, that's what I'm talking about. Smart, but Dude, how about I this wish right you were that well, tall. I had to go with the panel. <laughs> <laughs> I've been watching you on these loud shows. <laughs> you I was like, right. man, that's the greatest thing ever. Right. <laughs> so I cut the sleeves off a rec tech shirt. Yes. I love <laughs> Good morning, Coy. I love it. I can't cuss on this guy. No, you can't. No cussing. No cussing. <laughs> That's funny. How are, we doing? How are we doing? How's everybody doing out there? National Meatball Day. Oh, yeah. We got a viewers, Matt. How are we doing? Rosie Panconi checking Rosie in. Rosie Panconi! All right. Um, that is a great name. That's a great name. That is a great name. Matt's my favorite name. Keep it going? Yeah, you're good. Um, all right, well. Today is uh, March the 9th. It is National Meatball Day. Meatball Day. Meatball Day. Meatball Day. Meatball Day. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, uh, my name is uh, Chef John. I'm here with Chef Greg, and my boy Stevie from Twisted Rio. Everybody knows Stevie. Loves Stevie. How y'all doing? Um, we're, we're doing meatballs. It's all meatballs all day today. So, that's what we're getting on. Um, we're going to go ahead and just talk about a little bit about what we're going to be making. We're going to do um, chicken meatballs. It's an Asian glazed absolutely yeah. lemongrass meatballs. Uh, we're doing uh, grandma, not my grandma, Chef Greg's grandmother, Veronica's classic meatballs. Uh, we're doing a mega meatball that's stuffed with mozzarella cheese. It's huge. I saw Chef Greg was putting it together earlier. It's it's massive. It's a 20 pound meatball. Yeah, it's massive. It's a 20 pound meatball. It's massive. It's massive. It's massive. Uh, we're also going to do uh, Italian wedding soup, which is pretty much a, a soup with meatballs. Absolutely. Little little meatballs. We went ahead and uh, smoked these off a little earlier to, to speed it up. It's a great way to use some extra leftover meatballs. And I love it. It's fantastic. I love it. We also, Stevie's going to cook uh, some Jamaican stew for us. And he's also doing a candy cashew and bacon like topping for some ice cream. It could be ice cream, it could be a bar smack. You know, what better way to make something that's bad for you, bacon, make it a little worse for you, add some sugar and candy it up. It's delicious. I love it. That sounds great. I'm super excited. As a, as a, as a, as a twisted, it's a twisted top. Yeah. And we're also doing a little rigatoni a la vodka. So. You know, you gotta have pasta with the meatballs. Yes, and you gotta have vodka with the pasta sauce. So I, Ray, I'm, just for you, buddy. Ray Carnes <laughs> in the house. So, if we're gonna jump right into it. Um, actually, I'm gonna take a second. We're gonna go ahead and just share this video. Like and share. Yeah, like and share. Everybody out there, let's go ahead. If you think that you love meatballs, or you know someone who loves meatballs, let's take a minute. Like and share the video so they could get on with their their day and and know that they're gonna be able to come back and see this video. I'm gonna go ahead and do this right now. Yeah. I'm sharing it. You gotta, you gotta hit that button. Yeah, and instead of likes, we like the wow face. We want wow faces and hearts. So if you're loving what you're seeing, give us some wow faces and hearts, people. Wow. That face right there. Or the O face, depending on you know, who you are. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we want to dive right into the uh, chicken yeah, recipe? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. All right, so I, I appreciate Stevie uh, coming down to my level here. Um, <laughs> so we have three pounds of ground chicken. Now, there's a couple different types of the store. You can get the extra lean, which is like 99% uh, percent, uh, pro, uh, the white meat, 1% fat. It's really not enough fat to make a good meatball. So this one here is a 93.7 grind, so it's 7% fat. Real good way to start. All right, so we're going to add in a little bit of onion, some scallion, some sesame oil, fantastic, some hoisin sauce. Hoisin. Hoisin, some yes. fermented uh, black beans. Delicious. We've got to kick up the heat a little bit. We're going to add a little sriracha. Raymond Carnes watching. Raymond Carnes. Hey. Hey. We're going to add in some lemongrass. And Chef, the lemongrass that you got here, did you, get, you got this at the store, right? You can get it already pureed like yeah, that? Yeah, so I, I'm not a fan of my hand smelling like garlic. My wife doesn't really like it so much. <laughs> yes, sir. So whenever you can find like ginger, garlic, lemongrass in the tubes, just save yourself the time, right? Happy wife, happy life. There you go. There you so go. So add in some ginger. And no fun day Friday would be complete without Jody's Jody. Asian persuasion. Jody! So, miss that guy. Yeah. I We're going to add in a little yeah. Asian persuasion. And there's some sriracha powder in there. There's some ginger. It's really delicious. A couple eggs. And we'll get in there with our hands and just kind of mix it up. And what we'll do is it'll be kind of wet. 
And we'll add in maybe a quarter cup, half cup of breadcrumbs just to kind of tie it together. And to make sure your seasoning's right, go ahead and grab a little bit on a hot pan, kind of cook it off, give yourself a little taste, and that way you can ensure that your meatballs are right where they need to be. So, and then let it sit in the cooler for 15, 20 minutes, let it get good and cold, let those flavors kind of come across and, and marry, and they're gonna be uh, fantastic. So we're gonna add in just a, maybe about a half cup crumb. And they're seasoned pro oh, chef? They are. Now, I didn't add milk into these because, again, the, the chicken's a little softer. Okay. So I don't need that moisture. I just need something to kind of tie it together. Nice. So that egg and that breadcrumb is going to be a nice bit of binder there. So Excellent. squish more, you know. Great job for the kids. Have their hands get dirty, not yours. Yeah. Part of the whole family, too, making yeah. meatballs, you know? The more hands, less work. Well, it's one of those, like, make a bunch and put them in the freezer, yeah. you know? So when you get tied with that, you know... Soccer practice, this and that, you can, you can uh, have some quick and easy. So on to Grandma Veronica's meatballs. Grandma. Now, she makes a mean meatball. Does she? But she cannot make meatloaf. <laughs> How is that so different? Uh, I don't know. I think I was probably about 10 at the time. And uh, there was probably 18 or 20 of us for dinner. And she made a meatloaf. And I don't know what the hell she did with that meatloaf. But it was probably, you couldn't eat it. Wow. Of the thousands of things she's cooked over the years, wow. everything's been delicious, except that meatloaf. Grandma Veronica. So, 91 years old, she's not going to live that one down. <laughs> All right, so the secret to, my opinion, of a really good meatball is going to be a couple different meats, right? Okay. So we've got some 80-20 ground chuck, we've got some uh, ground pork, and then a pound of mild Italian sausage. Nice. And if you can't find the sausage uh, not cased, just cut it out of the casing and, and call it done. You can also, if you want, add in a pound of veal. Nice. It gives you some good good textures and, and whatnot there. So we'll go ahead and mix this up. And again, I've got um, four pounds of uh, ground chuck and a pound each of the uh, sausage and the, um, the pork. Nice. So I've quick sweated this onion a little bit in some olive oil. And quick sweating, what does that mean for so, people who don't necessarily know? It's just, a, it's just a good warm pan, a little bit of olive oil, two minutes, kind of move it around, just enough to kind of release some of those essential oils and uh, a little bit of that uh, good flavor there. So again, garlic in it too, because I do not want my hands to smell like garlic. I'm with you on that. You know, Somebody's I love doing it. it for you. Why not take advantage? <laughs> I of love it. Keep wife, it simple. I love it's it. Right. My wife doesn't care for it. So we're gonna add in some fresh herbs. So we've got some beautiful first thyme, some oregano, some basil. Stevie, Ray, say what's up. What's up, Ray? Some Asiago cheese. Enjoy nice. Nashville, buddy. Now we will do something different here that we didn't do with the chicken meatballs is we're gonna make a panada. So we've got some milk and we're gonna soak and hydrate our breadcrumb. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna guarantee a moist meatball. So again, about two parts milk, one part breadcrumb. Just give that breadcrumb a quick little head start and that will uh, thicken up and give great moisture to our meatball. Which kind of makes sense too, not putting just dry bread into your ground meat that's now, already dry. If you've got leftover bread at the house, go ahead and leave it on the counter, put it in food processor, or make your own breadcrumbs. Definitely. Again, I'm uh, taking the, the lazy way out. We'll go ahead and add that into there. And heifer dust. I love it. Because why not? Yes, it's sir. delicious. Yes, it is. Again, you've got some salt, pepper, garlic, paprika, onion, parsley, some great flavor in here. Goes so good on everything. Everything. Yeah, I mean, you could put it on. On a leather shoe and it would taste good. <laughs> so again, um, get your hands in there. Great job for the kids. Okay, we're going to create a little well. We're going to add in some eggs. So what's your favorite meatball recipe out there? What's your secret ingredient? Yeah, comment comment below, you guys, on y'all's uh, favorite meatball recipe. Or actually the biggest meatball that you guys have ever made. <laughs> Chef's Greg throwing it down today with a huge mega meatball. Now, when you form your meatballs, do you like them a little more loose or tight? Or See, I like a, a larger meatball. I think, it, one, it helps retain more moisture. So I like a, a meatball about the size of a baseball. Um, and I don't like to pack it too hard because, again, we don't want to... Uh, we want them to be almost, not soft, but have a, a softer texture. If they're, if they're dry and tough... That's, I agree with you on that. You know. And, again, keep your meat nice and cold. We don't want to uh, unemulsify that fat. And again, this texture here looks pretty good. It's soft, but it'll hold together. So I don't think we need to add any more crumb because again, if I take and just go ahead and form a quick meatball here. Oh, yeah. oh, look that's, at the skills. Oh, that's that's oh, yeah. right there. 
I mean, it's soft. I'll go ahead and kind of squish it for you. See, it's it's still soft, but it'll it'll hold its shape. Perfect. And I like the size of a baseball. I just think, again, that just does it for me. So when I eat four or five of them, yeah. you know, I yeah. just don't feel like a complete glutton. <laughs> I mean, that's, that, that's a good looking meatball. Now, since there's that sausage in there, there's those curing salts and good flavor in there. Again, let this sit uh, in the fridge for 15, 20 minutes before you shape them up and let all of those flavors kind of come across. And right. They're going to be fantastic. So Excellent. And also make sure that you go ahead, like what Chef Greg said, and take a little piece out and go ahead and cook it off absolutely. so you know that the seasoning is properly before you go ahead and start forming up all your meatballs. Yeah, absolutely. That's so great. we got these done, and um, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll get those we'll get those shaped up. Yes. Now the uh, Italian wedding soup. Can we yeah. talk about that real yeah, quick? Yeah, let's do that. All right. So we went ahead and made that same recipe and made some smaller meatballs here. So this is a great way if you've got leftover meatballs, you can go ahead and cube them up. It's really up to you. So the mise en place for uh, for the soup is really easy. We've got some uh, mirepoix, some carrots, onions, and celery. We'll sweat that off in the matador. Let that go for five, 10 minutes with some garlic. We're gonna hit it with some spinach and kale. You can also use escarole. It's really up to you. We've got some chicken stock. We'll put our meatballs in there. And then uh, we will go ahead and add in some couscous. And this is an Israeli couscous, so it's a, a thicker pearl. And that'll plump up great. And uh, yeah, Italian wedding soups is one of my favorite. Yeah, it's delicious. Favorite uh, broth-based soups. Um, but yeah, it's fantastic, and we'll come back and hit yeah. a home run with the rigatoni vodka later. And yeah, I so. think that's great. That's Steve, do you want to you want to talk? You want to slide on sure. over? We'll talk about the Jamaican stew. Jamaican stew. All right, so kind of what I did. I started off a little bit this morning at our restaurant, Twisted Burrito. Just get that in there. <laughs> Spell that out. Uh, what this is? This is a pork shoulder cubed off about an inch, inch and a half cubes. You can do it to whatever you want. Did you oh, take any of the fat off of that? You want to leave some on to it. You want the browning in the pan when okay. you get it going because that brown is what's going to make the stew thicken up a little bit, give it a good color. Nice. So you do want fat to give it the flavor. Trim some of it off. I actually shaved the, the bottom fat off and turned it into some of the bacon that I'm going to do for the uh, candy bacon and cashews. Okay, okay Steve. Yeah. yeah. Cross your line. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So then we kind of did. We're going to add some potatoes. Dice, carrots, sweet peppers. They look hot, but they're not hot. They're going to go into the stew also. About two tablespoons of ginger and a thyme sprig. Green onions. You can cut these down, sliver them up however you want. I like them a little bit bigger. It gives you a little bit more bite when you put it in. Now, with this stew, what we're going to do today, I like it on a corn tortilla as a taco. Mm. Uh, that sounds something delicious. a little bit different. That sounds yeah. delicious. We're going to make a jalapeno, I mean a Jamaican coleslaw also to go with this, to go on there. So it's something a little bit different. I'm loving it. You're bringing the heat today. Yeah. 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 I love it. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting this started. What are you going to cook this on? We're going to put this on the bullseye. Okay. It's Excellent. my new uh, workhorse in my Rec Tech arsenal. You love the bullseye, uh, huh? Man. I think it does work now. No doubt. I, I'm in love with it. <laughs> I have all of them. My favorite, so right now, it's I guess it's because it's my new toy, but uh, I cook on it, no joke, every night. And I didn't know it was Meatball, National Meatball Day, and I yeah. did meatballs last night. I love it. So, hey, Look at you, yeah. you're in tune. You're in yeah. tune with what's I did, going on. I did meatballs with a uh, marsala gravy and orzo. I didn't even know you knew what marsala was. I work for your sister. Oh, that's, that's true. Right. That's right, Macaroni exactly Grill. Chef. That's oh, that's yeah. right, that's right. Stevie, executive chef time. over here. It has been a long, long time. Long, long time. time. How old were you? 20? Yeah, 20. Ago? When I was wearing short pants back in those days. They ain't never been real short. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Well, when we come back, we're going to get all this stuff on the grill, and when we come back, we'll show you all where we're at. We have some of Chef Greg's rolling up the meatballs. So set your notifications so when we pop back up, you guys will know. Sorry, this is just me blocking light. Just you blocking light? Yeah. Hey, while I got you guys uh, out there watching us, why don't y'all go ahead and let me know where you guys are from. Where y'all watching from today? Hit us up. Instagram, Facebook, let us know. I want to show them a sneak peek of the big ball. 
20 pound meatball. Look at that ingenuity. What's up, Jerry? What's up, Nick? Mike? Scott? Indiana checking in. Indiana! Dave from upstate New York. Miranda upstate from New Statesboro. Yes. They got snowballs in upstate New yeah, York. Yeah, they do. No, thank you. Pennsylvania, uh, Eastern Oregon. Come on. I love it. Some cold places right now. And it is 29 Some degrees when I woke up. Yeah. That's too cold for Augusta, Georgia. Way too cold for Augusta, Georgia. We're in yeah. the south. Like, yeah. I have my hoodie on. I'm driving. You know? <laughs> my windshield had some froth I haven't let the truck warm up today. Uh, it was it's, bad. It's, it's painful. No, it's real painful. It's bad that it's, and then, I don't know, like 65, 70, not a cloud in the sky. Beautiful, beautiful right now. Yeah, now it's beautiful. We can complain about that. <laughs> they got like three foot of snow up there. Good no, Lord. No, 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 thank, thank you. you. No, thank you. We're having a beautiful day down Should here in Augusta, we, uh, Georgia. go ahead and get started here? Let's do it. All right, so we showed you a sneak peek of our massive meatball. And then uh, we'll go ahead and get these on, the RT700. So I'm going to put these right on the uh, the grate. So Chef Greg, you don't worry about these meatballs sticking directly to the grate? Absolutely not. We want to get some great flavor. We're doing these at 350 degrees. You could go, you could go lower, uh, but again, when we cut them later on, you'll see there'll be a good bit of pink. Pick up a little bit of smoke. Chef Greg, I like how you had a bowl to the sides and all that grease is breaking out of it. You know, um, it's so bright my phone calls in the sun. Every now and then I have a good idea. So, well, we got it clamped so it won't come apart, and uh, I'm thinking that'll be about two hours. Like I said, it's a 20 pound hunk of meat. So, that's going to be so good. We'll let those go to bed. Those will cook about 45 minutes or so. And again, those are like baseball sized meatballs. And they're going to be awesome. awesome. They're be delicious. Awesome. So, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Make right. a sandwich. So, Stevie, what do you got going on this uh, bullseye? What are we doing? What are we going to do today on the bullseye? Like I said, this is my new little workhorse. If you're on the fence about getting a pellet grill, you're concerned, try this for starters, man. It's the easiest thing I've ever used. What I did, I heated up my pan here. What we're going to do, we're going to brown this pork off. We want to get it as dark as possible around all sides. Okay. Sears in some of the flavor before we get it into the stew. What do you have the grill on, Steve? The, the grill right now is at 500. 500? Okay. Yeah, I got it set at full blast. Full blast. Now, I've taken this uh, pork, rubbed it with some olive oil, and a liberal amount of jerk seasoning. Nice. So you can season it with whatever you like. You're going with the allspice. Allspice is the main ingredient in a jerk seasoning. All that stuff. They make a jerk season, so just use it. Right, once again. Yeah, easy peasy. Use wow. what's easy. That's right. Yeah. Don't, don't make it too hard on yourself. Don't make it complicated. We're just going to let this brown off. That's probably all about, off, I'd say about 10, 20 minutes to the most. Okay. Third case. We're going to flip it from side to side. So it gets good dark brown. You want that dark color in your stew. Then we'll come back and add all the veggies and a red stripe, of course, just to get it started. Nice. We're gonna make the uh, Italian wedding suit. Yes, yeah, so let's do this Italian let's, wedding uh, suit. Let's kick this. So we're gonna go ahead and get our matador heated up. You have a good shrimp on there. Yeah, it's good. Chef Greg, one of the things I found about this matador is it's so versatile. You can do so many different things with it. How, how have you found uh, like cooking on it? Have you, do you like cooking on the matador? Or, I love it. From a chef's point of view? It's okay, we're trained professionals though. We know what to do. We are cooking with gas. I love doing. the matador. I think it, uh, one, it's easy to clean. Super easy, right? Um, it doesn't heat up or stick in the kitchen, so if you're frying, yeah. you're doing uh, some fried fish, fried chicken, you can do it outside. Whenever you're doing like Asian cooking or like Thai and you got that chili, that really spiciness, you don't want that in your house. You want to eat it in your yeah. house, yeah. you want to cook it outside. That's right, that's right. Um, I really enjoy making the neighbors jealous. Yes. So all that really good flavor just kind of goes next door. And uh, so we're gonna get this heated up. So the first step of this is gonna be, we're gonna add our, uh, we're gonna add some butter. And then we're going to add our mirepoix, so our carrots, onions, and celery. 
But how much Mirepoix is that? So Chef? it's probably about a cup and a half each. And we're going to cook this for about 8 to 10 minutes or so. We don't want to really caramelize it, but we really want to give it some good, some good flavor there. And that's really going to be the, the essence and the base of, of our soup. And we've got some really delicious chicken stock. And again, those meatballs are going to give off some great flavor. But again, that ear paw is really the essence of everything. All that development of flavor really starts here. So we'll let that go for about eight minutes or so. And then we'll hit it with some garlic. We'll add our chicken stock. Let that come to a simmer. We'll add uh, our kale and spinach. Let that cook down for about uh, 10, 15 minutes or so. Hit it with the meatballs. Let that simmer for five minutes. Parmesan cheese and... That's what I'm talking about. We're getting, be on some, point. we're getting some wow faces for this, people. Come on, I want some wow faces. When's the last time y'all made, what's the last soup y'all made from scratch? Who knows what Mirapua is? Come on, comment back, let me know. Last soup you guys made, what was it? So, what, while this is cooking, we want to get some chicken meatballs? Yeah, let's do this chicken meatballs. So we're going to cook the meatballs on a mat because the, the texture of the chicken is a little soft. Okay. So we definitely want the uh, the extra protection with that, that grill mat. Right. And if you've not picked up some grill mats, oh my god, you do anything for vegetables, yeah, right. they're, bacon. They're incredible. they're incredible. Incredible. Anything that you would fall through the grates. So again, if you're worried about it sticking to your hands, you get a little bit of water. I tend to use a spoon for the chicken only because it, the chicken gets a little stickier. So again, we're going to glaze these. Just want to grab a kind of a scoop. Use the bowl to kind of shape it. Okay. And they look a little rustic, but as they cook, that protein, that needle kind of shrink down and pull together a little bit. Together. And we'll let these go at 350 again for about 25, 30 minutes. That last five minutes, we'll glaze these up with a combination of some hoisin, sriracha, a little sesame oil, and they'll, uh, they'll get nice and sticky on the outside. Oh, that sounds great. So. That sounds so well, good. They're going to be delicious. So you would say these are probably what, like four ounce meatballs, five ounce meatballs? Yeah, they're probably good four ounce meatballs. Okay. Yeah, we okay. made these today at the house of the kids. They, they actually love them. I was telling my son, uh, this would be great wrapped up inside of a, a wonton wrapper oh. and fried. Oh, yeah. So you could fry those in a matador too. Yes. So they would be fantastic. Have you done much frying in the matador? We did. We've done some fish. We did chicken. We made a fresh uh, chicken tenders a couple nice. weeks ago. Um, I'm trying to think of what else we did. Chicken wings, we breaded some chicken wings. We did uh, some eight-way chickens. Nice. Yeah. So I guess I the main thing is just keeping that fryer at the proper frying temperature. Do you yep. use uh, do you have a probe you use for that? I show? do, yeah. I keep it right about 350 Very and then good. I uh, I fry in peanut oil. Nice. I know okay. some folks have the allergies, but I think peanut oil is the one of the best oils to use. I definitely have to agree, especially yeah. for frying. Absolutely. So we'll go ahead and we're gonna get these on the 340. You wanna grab the lid for me right there yes, behind sir. us? What are you carrying those with? So I, again, using that grill mat makes life real easy. Super. And again, you can kind of just space them out. Give them a little squeeze. And we'll glaze these up a little bit later. They're going to be fantastic. Okay. Looking great. Beer paws looking really nice. Beer paws it's, looking uh, really good. starting to sweat. Some good steamage there. Yeah, those vegetables look nice. They're not necessarily getting brown, but yeah, I can see what you're saying, Chef. Just they a get, little bit of heat to them. You know, some people were, were worried about the matador burning. Yeah. It's all about temperature control. So, you know, don't put it on high and walk away for five minutes, right? You, you don't want to do that. Turn it on, pay attention. You know, again, I've got, if you look at the bottom, this pan's not burning, these vegetables aren't burning, this is on high, okay? So just pay attention, you know? One of those, you don't want to walk away. When you're cooking on a, on a you know, an apparatus like this, have your mise en place ready. As you can see, we have everything we need to do the soup right here. Okay? So we don't need to walk away and find stuff. We don't need to go to the kitchen. You know, not a good time to answer the phone and, and, and talk to people. Yeah, we're cooking here, people. Stay focused. Stay focused. All right, Steve, do you want to go ahead and we're going to stir that meat up? Did you give it a... I gave it a stir a second ago. Oh, right. so get it So we're gonna get this around and we're adding, are we adding the vegetables to this? We'll add the vegetables to it afterwards. Okay. We'll add a little beer in there to get a little broth. Nice. We're just gonna keep letting it reduce itself down. Uh -huh. If you're doing it in smaller batches, it's best if you can do it in a Dutch oven. Uh, we unfortunately didn't have a Dutch oven big enough. Right. It's always so, a problem. A yeah. Big, a lot of big people eat today. So we're gonna do it in this pan, see how it comes out. It should be just as good. We're gonna let it get good and brown. Actually, kind of caramelized. 
caramelized on the outside, almost burnt. Yeah, it looks, looks, looks great. great. Yeah. It looks great so far. So when we come back, Stinky, we're going to put the vegetables on. Vegetables on. We're going to go back and uh, put the uh, kale and the spinach on the uh, wedding soup, and we're going to check on those meatballs. So you guys stay tuned, and we'll be right back. Hey everybody! Welcome back! Welcome back! Welcome back! Welcome back! Welcome back! Welcome back! Alright, so we're back. Um, we're gonna have to throw those veggies on. We're Get that Jamaican have. stew going. Jamaican stew! Take that <laughs> Woo! Room. Yes, sir! This is not the beer I was drinking out of. Right, pan. A little beer. So any beer will do. Any Steve. beer will do. All Red right. stripe. I just went because it was Jamaican jerk. There you go. Yeah. We're at about two tablespoons of Worcestershire at this point. Ginger, carrots, sweet peppers, that's beautiful. Some rough chopped chives. So, Steve, if you don't like these vegetables, you can use any vegetables. You can use them. anything you want. A, a, a real true Jamaican stew has different veggies in it. There's a lot of cabbage that goes in okay. Jamaican stew, um, and it's delicious. Wasn't sure what we wanted to go with. I like it. No, I like it. I'm a fan of all these vegetables. So I love the potatoes and the carrots. Yeah. But you know, some people may be, you know, have an aversion to peppers exactly. or onions yeah. or something you like that. You can change it up. You can do it just like a beef stew if you want. To me, the what makes it the Jamaican stew is the Jamaican spices, the jerk seasoning. All spice is a huge spice in Jamaica. Yeah. You can add all spice and any other spice with it, it'll come out the same. Okay. Uh, and like I said, we're going to do it a little bit different today. I'm going to make some white rice, which I'll show you the versatility once again of these grills. You can I'm make rice cook, on the grill? I'm going to cook white rice on the grill, baby. Cooking white rice on the white grill. Rice on the white grill. White rice on the grill. We're going to mix that down in a little bit. Check it out. Oh, we're just going to kind of let this roll. We'll come back. We'll add more juice to it as it cooks out. I'm going to do some corn tortillas because it's my favorite on the grill. Yeah. We'll turn them into like a taco. That sounds Sand. awesome. Sand. Maybe a little twisted taco. Now here, here's here's the key right here. This is going to be a little appetizer we're working on. I took this recipe from Chef Ed Lee, Edward Lee out of uh, Louisville, uh, 610 Magnolia if you're ever in Kentucky. I was there for 12 years, had the pleasure of dining in his restaurant. He does what's called candy, bacon, and cashews. He does his with curry. I'm going to do mine with pepper dust, sugar, uh, and the honey rib rub. What we're gonna do is we're gonna cook off these bacon pieces that I've cut. Get a good bacon. This is uh, cherry wood smoked and apple smoked bacon. So we're gonna go both, give it a little different flavor. Thick cut, the reason for cutting into pieces right now is what, John? So that it will not, when you cut it, if you do it later, you cook it, you do it later, it will crumble Crumbles everywhere. Up. This so way you get nice chunks of okay. bacon without being all crumbly a little bacon pieces as you can. That's what we're going to do to this bacon is sacrilege. Is it? We're adding sugar to bacon. We're going to make it candy bacon. That's how I take my bacon. Y'all don't eat y'all's bacon like that? How do y'all eat y'all's bacon? We're going to throw this in the bullseye. We're going to let that go until that's about three quarters done. Now maybe, we'll come back to that. now maybe it's just because I'm a fat boy, or I'm a chef, but I eat my candy bacon that people don't normally do. Yeah, not normal. Not, not normal. a normal thing. I, okay, well I thought it was normal. That's how, that's how I take my bacon, you guys. Candy bacon. And now we're talking about your friend from Nashville, or for your friend from uh, Kentucky, that showed you how to do that. Yeah, not, got, not a, I wish he was a food uh, It was oh. just a big chef that I got oh, the pleasure okay. of dining at. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that's yeah, super yeah. nice. We did a nose to tail dinner with him with Woodford. Oh, that's awesome. And it was amazing. Yeah, I bet it was. It was really good. Uh, well, Jody is also, you know, he's in Nashville right now. Right. Yeah, that's why he's not on the show today, everybody. Jody is in Nashville. He's at the Hearth Patio and Barbecue Expo. Um, so 
any of you guys that are watching, if y'all are there watching, make sure you go up to Jody. He's been working out, you know, he's trying to get fit, trying to get that fitness in. He's been doing that stair stepper, working on his butt. Just give him a little pinch on the butt. And if you get photo proof of you doing that, we're going to send you something. Something we'll, good. Something real good. I think it's all last week he kept doing one of these, he trying, to, trying he, to show he was, us. He was. He was he's showing got, it. He's got that thigh master game going. <laughs> I don't know. And it's paying thigh off. Master. So you guys, y'all see him there. Make sure you give him a little pinch <laughs> and a hug. Get it on a photo, and we're going to send you something for sure. All right. <laughs> Chef Greg, so we're going to hit that uh, soup, professional soup. Yeah, we can, we can wrap up the soup. Soup's, okay. soup's good, and then we'll make, make the uh, vodka sauce. So what did we, uh, so you, you went ahead and... So we went ahead and we added our kale, okay. let that cook down, we added our couscous, we brought that up to a boil with our meatballs, we gave it a quick taste for salt, and then really just to finish it, a little bit of baby spinach at the end. Nice. And why do you put the spinach at the end and not when you put the kale in, Chef? Okay, well the, the kale's a little bit more of a robust green, and the spinach being more delicate flavor, I want that, that kind of sweetness to stay, as well as it, it doesn't need all that long to cook, so okay. just a little bit of heat. And again, this is a great broth-based soup. So if you're looking to kind of lighten something up. It looks great. I mean, yeah. the colors in there. I it mean, really I'm kind great. of partial, but yeah. it, it tastes pretty good. Yeah, it looks great. You know, it looks but it's great. all about that chicken stock. So when you're done doing, uh, you know, maybe some uh, spatchcock chicken, save that bone, save those carcass, yeah. simmer it down and make your own stock. I guarantee you won't be disappointed. And you can freeze that stock too. Like you can Absolutely. go ahead and make that up. And put yeah, it up you here. can do it, uh, especially if you want small quantities, ice cube trays. Oh, that's great way. That's a great idea. Two ounces. There you go. A little uh, Chef Greg tip right there, there everybody. Go. A little ice cube trays for your chicken stock. That way you can pop out exactly how much you're going to need for any particular dish. Absolutely. I like so it. the vodka sauce. Oh, yeah. So let's do that. Is Ray out there watching? Ray, Ray's Ray's Ray watching. One for Ray. This, this, one's, for you, Ray. this one's for you, Ray. Got to cook with vodka. Got to. All right, so I kind of cut my teeth in an Italian restaurant, if you okay. will, and uh, this is one of the things we cooked an awful lot of. All right. So let's go ahead and get it started. Look and get this lit. And I had this grill preheating, so we're gonna go ahead and add in a little bit of olive oil. What do you have that flame on, Chef? Uh, this one's on low, but it was on high for a little while. Okay. We're gonna go ahead and hit this with our mushrooms. And I want our mushrooms to go first because I want to cook the water out of them. And I want to really get some good good color there. Okay? So we'll give these probably about a four or five minute head start. And we really want to render that water out, get good color in there. What we'll do is at that point, we'll hit it with some onion and garlic, a little bit of oregano and fresh thyme, and then Want some vodka? Yeah. Right? Vodka. So we'll add in probably about, about two cups of vodka. Let that cook down till it reduces by about half. Hit it with some heavy cream and uh, some of your favorite marinara. <laughs> and oh, it sounds good, great. Good stuff. Super excited. Good stuff. So again, we're starting to get some good color on our mushrooms here. We're going to add in a little bit of butter. What's your guys' favorite vodka to use when you guys are cooking? Stevie, what's your favorite vodka? My favorite vodka? Yeah. Uh, Tito's. Tito's is a good vodka. I'm a Tito's fan too. Tito's is a shout yeah. out to Tito's. Yeah, shout out to Tito's. Send, Send it right over, please. Yeah, yeah please. please. <laughs> we'll be with it all day long. That's right. That's right. Best boy Mary's in the world, Tito's. Tito's and a dirty girl. Oh, Tito's and a dirty girl. Now, 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 are you a spicy or the spicy? I like it. I like spicy. I like spicy with a good pickled okra, which I did. All right, so if you look at these yeah. mushrooms, they're really starting to cook down. Pick up some good flavor. We'll hit it with our onion and garlic. Oh, it smells so good. Some fresh thyme. This is oregano and basil. You got the salt bay out there with the oregano bay. Yeah, yeah. It's off, it's off the. You got a little duck face too, you know? Alright, so when you're cooking with alcohol, disclaimer, be very careful. What you don't want to do is have your face right over top of it when you add your liquor because it might flambe. So just be careful. Blue ice. Yes. Two cups of vodka. Let that cook down. It'll only take a minute or two. 
So you're just trying to like get the alcohol out of that, right, chef? Mm -hmm. You're thinking it does? Yep. And there's some great flavor. I know vodka, some people, especially, you don't want to use, you know, um, the bottom of the barrel, if you will. You want something that's got some good flavor to it. Okay. Because again, whatever you're whatever you're cooking with is what it's going to taste like. So we're going to add in some heavy cream. So this is, and we cook three pounds of pasta. So we're going to add in uh, two quarts of cream. Now, unlike the wedding soup, this is not not healthy. That cream's not healthy, chef. No, you know, uh, at like 100 calories a teaspoon, not so much. <laughs> it's tasty, but not necessarily healthy. Just another reason to hit the gym, everybody. You there know? you go. Jesse? All right, so we'll let that simmer down and kind of reduce by about half. Then we'll add just enough sauce to turn it pink. Probably about a half a jar or so, give or take. Now we cooked our pasta al dente, so it's about 75, 80% cooked. And we'll actually finish it in the sauce. Oh, that's awesome. So we'll go just a, a, a squash more of the tomato. Again, you could always use your favorite Bloody Mary mix in here, so Dirty Girl goes great in here. I would use the original because sometimes the hot gets a little spicy. Okay. And Brandon, that stew is what Stevie's doing right back there in the background on that bullseye. All right, so we'll let that come up to a simmer, reduce for about five five minutes or so, okay. add our pasta, fin it with some Parmesan cheese, and just a couple drops of vodka over the top, and we're going to call it done. All right. Now we have our mega meatball. Yeah. So we, we put a probe mega. in it. Mega. So our meatball is 105 degrees. The other meatballs will be done in probably about 15, 20 minutes. So, and then we can glaze up our chicken meatballs. All right. All right. So we got those going in the trailblazer. So we made a little uh, Asian barbecue sauce with some hoisin. I did take some of the Rectech Bullseye Spicy. So we added some ginger or lemongrass in there, but that spicy mix really, uh, that barbecue sauce is on point. Yeah. What do you? What's your guys' favorite barbecue sauce or sauce to put on uh, your meatballs? Now you're opening up, huh? Now you open up can of worms. Come on boy. now, what kind of sauce? Y'all do uh, white sauce, marinara sauce, sweet sauce, spicy sauce. How do you guys do a brown sauce? Because I actually like my meatballs with some demi. You know, that's just oh, so good. A little sour cream and brandy. Yes, in there. now you're talking, chef. You know. I mean, you got to cook with some alcohol. Definitely. So we'll let these uh, get glazed up, maybe another five minutes and they'll be good. Again, since it's ground chicken, you want to make sure this goes to 165 degrees internal. You're right, those rustic balls kind of tightened up, Chef. Yeah. And again, it gives you more surface area for some good flavor. It kind of, those little cavities pick up and hold the sauce. So, you know, cooking doesn't need to be perfect, it just needs to be delicious and it's got to be from the heart, so. That's it. That's it. We'll close these up, let those go in another five minutes. And again, you can see in the soup here, that spinach is wilted down nicely. And uh, again, if you're good. gonna make soup, make a lot, you know? Yeah. Freeze it up. But again, look how delicious that is. That meatball, those I meatballs some, gave some great I flavor. Some, I need some wow faces for this soup. What's a wow face look like? Oh! Some wow faces and some hearts. Y'all live out there? Come on! Hit us back, let me hear something. Everything is looking great. So you're going to toss the noodles in there right yep. away? So we've let this uh, simmer a little bit, and this is uh, some drained noodles. And again, that's three pounds of pasta, okay? When we cook in the matador, we cook for an army. We have a small army here to feed, too. You know, and they're a hungry army. Yeah, they work hard. These guys out here are working hard to make sure you have the products y'all need to do this kind of stuff. So we'll just we'll cook that down, and again, uh, that cream will reduce. The starch from the pasta will help to tight, tighten up that sauce. And then what we'll do is just to finish it off, a little bit of uh, Asiago cheese, Parmesan, whatever your favorite cheese is. Just, just like, just make it rain, right? Oh yeah. Make it rain. And you can see that that soup's already, or the sauce has already come back up to a simmer in the middle. Three, four, five minutes. That's going to be on point. Just to make sure there is a good bit of vodka flair in there, just at the very end, I like to just kind of give a couple drops over the top. Oh. A little drop over little, the top. Little, little behind the ear. Yes. <laughs> you can see how nice and thick that's getting now. 
And again, if you don't like mushrooms, don't add them. You can at this point, you know, throw in some grilled chicken, some yeah. grilled shrimp. Looks it's really great. up to you. Greg, did you say rigatoni? Yeah, you can use any noodle you want. You want to use a noodle that's uh, got a hole, like a shell, uh, an elbow would be fine, uh, penne. You want something, since we're doing a cream sauce, that, that sauce can kind of go in and, and kind of fill up that cavity. Mm, hold on. Look at this. Look at this. Mm. We're going to add a little water to that now. And we're going to cover it. meatballs off the grill. We're going to go ahead and check that mega meatball, which is looking great. Uh, we're going to go ahead and pull these soups off, get Stevie's rice on. we got a lot of stuff going on. You guys stay with us. Come back. Oh, and we're doing a giveaway. Don't forget, we're giving a giveaway at the end today, you guys. Giving something away. we got some good questions for you all. Stay tuned. Hey everybody! And we're back. And we're back. And we're back. Well, we're back, and we've got we've just pulled uh, Chef Greg's. Pasta and soup off of the matadors. So this is the Italian uh, wedding soup. Mm -hmm. So this has some kale, some couscous, some onion, some garlic, some little miniature meatballs. Chef, there you go. You oh, can't, you you can't serve yourself. Thank you, sir. I was just getting you the bowls. You know? Here. Yeah. Teamwork. That's it. Makes a dream work. Oh, look at that. Come on, y'all. So we'll give this mm -hmm. a taste. Again, all those greens are nice and tender. That couscous kind of help thicken up that, that, uh, oh, that yeah. broth. Mm. Come on. Mm. Come on. Mm. Man, I would slap somebody right now. Mm. I'm telling you right now. Mm. Mm. It's pretty tasty. Yeah, it makes you want to dance. It's so good. I'm telling you right now. Yum. I'm going to eat a bowl of that later on. Oh, for sure. So we got a rigatoni with vodka. Let's go ahead and cut one of these meatballs. Now, again, these are good. What's up, David? Good What's size up, meatballs. So we'll cut these open. Oh yeah. You can see the nice smoke ring. Look how moist those meatballs are. Look delicious. You gotta have a nice moist meatball. And you know they're super moist. You cut it with a plastic knife, so that's a, that's a good meatball. Yes. So this was Veronica's meatballs. Grandma, <laughs> Grandma, mm. Mm. Good meatball. Come on, Grandma. Oh, it smells so good. Come on, Grandma. Mmm. That's a bomb. Mm hmm. There's a hot meatball, too. Yeah. Yes, Richard, the, both dishes made on the matador. My how, question is well, how'd Chef, you make the meatballs, Greg? I'm sorry. Say it again. And how did you make those meatballs? So we took um, four pounds of ground chuck, 80 20, a pound of ground pork, a ground of a pound of pork sausage uncased. We did uh, some onion that was cooked with garlic, oregano, thyme, parsley, basil. We mixed in some breadcrumbs, some milk, a little bit of eggs. Mmm. Delicious. That's so good. So good. Hey, Ben, you want to come try the pasta? Yeah. Come on. I mean, you got to feed the boss first. Mm -hmm. So, rigatoni alla vodka. 
I had nightmares about this dish in Atlanta. We would serve, shoot, seven, eight hundred people on a Friday, Saturday night. Wow. And uh, this was one of the main dishes. So. Gave you nightmares? Yeah, because you, you, like, all you heard was the ticket printer. And it was a rigatoni vodka. Rigatoni vodka. It was brutal. So. That gave me nightmares. <laughs> no, I like the dreams. Oh, you already do that, but. There you go. <laughs> I mean, that's some good, good pasta. No, it's delicious. You, you nailed it. Nailed it. And again, if you don't like mushrooms, don't add them, but that cream. And you actually pick up some of, like, you say the vodka, some of the subtle notes and whatnot, but no. um, that's yeah. stupid delicious. It's totally good. I don't know how grandma can make a meatball so good and not be able to make meatloaf, but oh. whatever. That's delicious. That's a mm. delicious meatball. And Richard, you can go back on this page, on this Facebook page, and watch them prep it out earlier. Yeah, man. Yeah. Super yeah. easy. And Richard, go ahead and share it, too, if you like it. You know, Absolutely. everybody go ahead. You know, while we're eating, I know y'all are hungry. I know y'all are like, man, that's so good. Well, share it. Mm -hmm. Share it so all your friends and family can watch and learn and come and eat this delicious food. And mm. all those up in the Northeast that are, you know, got like, I don't know, 12, yeah. 18, two foot of snow. Yeah, this is perfect for y'all. Makes, uh, makes a wedding suit. That's perfect for y'all. So coming up, we got Stevie finishing up that's his right. uh, Jamaican jerk pork, right? That's right. It's got two. some rice cooking. That's right. We got the rice cooking. He's got candy bacon um, cooking with the cashews. He's going to top over yep. that. Yep. I think he's going to come back and we're going to do a slaw. We have the giant meatball still. We, we got the giant meatball coming up. Yep. Yeah, the 20 pound meatball. Yes, that thing is ridiculous. <laughs> and uh, it's Monday, Friday. It's Monday, Friday. And you got to have a giveaway on Monday, Friday. So come on back because we got something good for everybody out there. You don't want to miss it. Don't want to. So uh, we're going to eat some pasta, some meatballs, finish up some stuff, and we'll be right back. We'll be back in about a half hour or so. Yeah. All right, about mm. The Le Show. Hey, everybody. Friday. Cooking meatballs on Friday. Friday. Cooking meatballs on Friday. Friday. Sponsorship yeah. for that. I don't yeah. look at this. Look at. <laughs> oh, look out, Joey. Oh, Joey's got competition. Got competition for sure. For sure. I got moves like Jagger. Moves like Jagger. Yeah, I sure did. Don't I look sure. like Jagger. Thank the Lord for that. <laughs> you, know? you know, you know, some people think Jagger's good looking man. Back in the day. I just thought he doesn't, yeah, he doesn't do it for me. No. I'm more, you're more my type stuff. That's good. You know, I like them short, curly, like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm glad I'm standing over here. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome back, you guys. Glad that y'all uh, decided to come back and join us. I'm Chef John. I'm here with my super good friend Stevie from Twisted Burrito and Chef Greg. We're gonna. We came back. We uh, we're gonna talk about Stevie's dishes that he cooked today. Uh, he went ahead and did a Jamaican stew. Uh, it looks delicious. Um, he had carrots, peppers. Um, he put beer in there, uh, simmered it with beer, some lime juice, um, scallions. Looks great. Seared off the pork butt on pork the, uh, on the, on the sear the, kit on the bullseye. On the bullseye, yep. Great yeah. Great color there. A little caramelization on them. It looked great. And, uh, what else you got here, Steve? We got the Jamaican slaw, which is basically, it's a vinegar-based slaw. Apple cider vinegar, two tablespoons of Dijon mustard. I used, the, of course, the heifer dust. Uh, and then pickled okra, and then jalapeno peppers. Uh, some people put scotch bonnet, but they're hotter than your first girlfriend, so I, I like to taste my coleslaw. <laughs> then, so I use a few jalapenos. Uh, I like to put it on the, the Jamaican stew, and it also makes a great taco, so we toasted off some uh, yellow corn tortillas. Uh, nice. The slaw gives a little bit of acid back into mm -hmm. the to the beef. And then, of course, the candied bacon and cashews. We're gonna put that over some ice cream here in a little while for oh, Rachel. Yeah. She's Thank been you. dying for it all day. Yeah, right. Uh, which is <laughs> good stuff. It's oh, just yeah. basically we did some, rendered down some bacon, awesome. cooked it off, added cashews, sugar, heifer dust, and the honey rub. So it's got a good sweet, little sweet and savory. It goes good as a bar Thank snack you. or on a dessert. So. Yeah. And Diamond Dave, you'll find out where you get that hoodie in a second. Oh, Diamond Dave! Diamond Dave. And we also have uh, Chef Greg's chicken meatballs. We pulled those off. The Asian glazed chicken lemongrass uh, meatballs. Pull those off. They look delicious. delicious. Taste even better. Um, and see how they got that nice shot on there. Chef Greg really killed it. He's a man. He is the man. That sauce. That's it's at the Rectech Hot made a, a great sauce with some hoisin and some rice wine vinegar. Made nice. it tasty. Caramels out. Nice. Yeah, absolutely. I love it. I love it. So. 
we we got all the delicious food. Stevie showed you. This is a beautiful plate too, everybody. Like I can't wait to dig into this this uh, pork. I'm so so excited. Um, you guys though are also Rec Tech Academy. Y'all, you guys are instructors, right? Yep. So yes. Let's let's talk about that real quick. What's when is what's can all that kicking off? What's that going so it's on? It's May third through the sixth in okay. the Lady Annabellum Amphitheater in Evans, Georgia. All right. We got great stuff planned. So we got Carla Casanova, Matt Barber. Um, who else is coming? We got Ernest Cervantes. Nice. They're going over how to build a box from brisket to ribs to wow. chicken, uh, pulled pork. We've got some backyard recipe type stuff. It's Cinco de Mayo, so we're gonna have a, a, an amazing, an amazing uh, concert, outdoor experience too. It. So we're just some great. Cinco de Mayo recipes. We'll do uh, some dessert items. Sweet. And we'll be cooking uh, on all sorts of stuff. It's gonna it. be a jam. What? Uh, where? Do, if everyone out there who wants to know more about it, where would they go to find so out? So definitely, about... you know, go to rectechgrills.com. Look for the academy. You can follow us on all of social media. So you've got Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube. Snapchat, 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 Snapchat. Snapchat. What's the Snapchat name, Greg? Um, <laughs> uh, Snapchat name? Uh, Rec Tech Grills. What's the Instagram name? Rec Tech Grills. What's the Facebook name? Rec Tech Grills. What's the Pinterest name? Rec Tech Grills. Yeah, there we go. So it's a Rec Tech Grills? Yeah, I think it's Rec Tech Grills. Rec Tech Grills. I'm wearing this wonderfully warm Rec Tech Grills hoodie. Oh, right, yeah. So these things fit and are so warm. Are like, they? Oh. Those are exclusive too. Like you can't buy these things. You know, it's 29 degrees when I got in the car this morning. Yeah. So there is nothing better than this nice, nice hoodie. It's nice and thick. Like, what do you? How do you feel? think this is? How do you feel about us just what? giving a hoodie away? Hoodie. Let's give two hoodies. What? What? Two hoodies. What? Not yeah. this one though. Two. Not, like, not yours, but two, two. two new hoodies. We're gonna give two new hoodies. Well, mine's kind of seasoned. Yeah, it is. Oh, it's seasoned. You might want to hold on to that one. So we got more hoodies. Nice. So these are exclusive so. to Rec Tech. You can't buy these anywhere. You can't get these anywhere. No. So. All your friends will be jealous. Where did you get the Rec Tech hoodie? Be like, you got to watch the show. They're giving this stuff away. So I think um, in honor of this special duos, there's their 25th anniversary, television anniversary. Um, if you can name the duo. Who, so which TV which duo? Tino, which, which TV duo, duo which TV is celebrating duo? their 25th anniversary today? And I'll give you a hint that it's an animated duo. So And... MTV? That's another great hint. That's a big hint. You know? War? <laughs> that sums it up. That pretty much does. If you don't get it with that, then you guys just start paying attention to TV. Y'all must be doing outdoor stuff. I mean, after you eat this stew, it's a little warm. You might need some TV for your bunghole. TV for my bunghole. <laughs> yes. That's what I'm talking about. Matt, do we have anybody who's guessed it yet? <laughs> no, not a what? clue. Come there on. it is, Sarah and Trevor Lamb. Yeah, Sarah, Trevor Lamb. All right, good job. What about Instagram? Instagram? Moose three fifty three. Moose three fifty three. Thank you guys so much. All right, so what was the, the dynamic duo would be Beavis and Butthead. Beavis and Butthead. Twenty fifth anniversary today. Beavis and Butthead making us laugh for years. Thank you very much, guys. Um, Some shout outs. Yeah, we want to shout out to uh, Corey at uh, Tactical Calories. Um, we also want to give a shout out to Cole at Spike Tactical. Uh, Matt Barber, we want to give you guys a shout out just to, you know, we want you to heal up soon. Um, make sure you take care of that shoulder, you know, we'll send our prayers out to you. Yeah. Um, and just to remind everybody, Joe Day is in Nashville. He is at the Hearth Patio and Barbecue Expo. Give him one of these. Yeah, give him a little. You gotta go squeeze a cheek. Give him a little squeeze. And get, get it a picture proof that you squeeze a cheek, and we're gonna send you something super cool. Super cool. I want to thank these guys for being with me today. They made Enjoy. it so easy, you know. We'll you National meat. Well, they always good seeing you. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I got yeah. ready for a nap now. Yeah. I, like I know. Right? I'm glad this hoodie is a little large <laughs> after lunch today. Oh man, I'm ready for a nap. It was a great meatball day. Thank you guys for joining us. Come back next Friday. Do we know what we're doing next Friday? And for those that won the hoodie, uh, oh yes, call Connor. Call Connor. Call Connor. Connor. At, uh, what's the number, Matt? Seven zero six nine two two zero eight nine zero. 0890. Ask for Connor. Ask for Connor. Thank you guys for joining us. We'll see you next week. We'll be cooking next fr next fun day Friday. Fun day. Fun day. Fun day. Friday. Making meatballs on Friday. 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 Making meatballs on Friday. All right, guys. Till next time.